Okay. Thank you very much uh, for the sort of uh, uh, chance to sort of talk about this. As I said, because of my sort of maximally inconvenient time zone here, um, it's almost what is the six thirty in the morning here. I have to drive my kids to school pretty soon, so um, I will basically have to shorten my talk to more like a fifteen minute talk. So it will be a quick run through. So uh, hopefully that leaves you more time for the coffee break afterwards. <laughs> Okay, what this is about is basically um, motivated by the findings from A plus four super AMLs, um, where we have a four dimensional quantum field theory with gauge fields, fermions, and scalars, uh, which is super symmetric and has one only coupling constant, which is the tooth coupling. Um, the special thing about A equals four super AMLs is that it's exactly conformal for all n and all values of the lambda. Uh, the coupling constant, and it can be solved in the weak coupling limit using perturbation theory, and also in the strong coupling limit in the case where the number of fields or colors n goes to infinity. So what is nice about this uh, theory is that you can also uh, try to sort of uh, get some phenomenology out of it by putting it, for instance, at finite temperature. Um, if you do that, that breaks supersymmetry. Um, but it allows you to access thermodynamic observables such as the entropy density S. Um, and I quickly wanted to remind you of some results that come out from N equals four super AMLs. So at weak coupling, you find that the free entropy density um, is given by this ratio here. It's proportional to the temperature cubed times the number of colors N squared and a factor two pi squared over three. By contrast, if you use ADS-CFD, um, you can calculate the same quantity, the entropy density at strong coupling, and you find that again, it scales like T cubed, N squared, and a different factor, two pi squared over four, such that in the strong coupling limit, you find that it's exactly equal to the entropy density in the weak coupling limit times a universal ratio, which is three quarters. Now, if you were to if you were able to sort of solve the theory at any value of the interaction, um, then presumably you would find that this ratio, the entropy density over the free entropy density would be a universal function that starts out at one at zero coupling. And then as the coupling goes to infinity approaches three quarters of this value. Now there have been multiple uh, calculations improving both on the weak coupling side and the strong coupling side. Uh, per day uh, sort of interpolations between those two limits and so on and so forth. But as of yet, um, this universal function, the entropy density over the free limit um, is not known for n equals four super mass. The same is true for other objects that we are interested in, in particular transport properties. So there's a key transport property that um, is of interest for many other um, applications such as heavy ion collisions. That is the ratio of shear viscosity over entropy density, E to over S. And it can also be calculated for N equals 4 super EMLs in the weak coupling limit and the strong coupling limit. And in particular, one finds that in the strong coupling limit, this ratio E to over S again goes to a universal a constant, namely 1 over 4 pi. So basically, this provides a motivation to try to solve other field theories at strong coupling. At least at sort of other uh, simplification assumptions, for instance, larger. So, what I want to do in the following is I want to sort of motivate this to sort of um, try to find field theories where this solution can be done. And the particular choice I'm going to make is that I'm going to change dimensions and study field theories in three dimensions, so two spatial dimensions one time. I will consider an n-component vector model, and I will consider the limit of the number of vector uh, components to go to infinity, so a large n limit. And to be very explicit, uh, I can write down a Euclidean Lagrangian for this theory, where I just have a kinetic term and an interaction term, and I don't put any mass term because otherwise I would not get a conformal field theory here. So the point is that this um, simple model can be actually exactly solved for all values of the interaction parameters lambda in the large n limit. And um, the solution basically sort of is not 
it doesn't sort of require any highbrow um, mathematics. It basically sort of employs methods that have been known in physics for many, many decades. Um, in particular, one obtains exact and analytic, sometimes analytic results in the stroke conflict limit directly from the field theory without basically sort of having to go through a holographic conjecture. Um, I will skip the details because they are really not necessary to sort of get the physics. The point is that um, you can sort of um, get uh, things like an in medium uh, mass for this um, scalar fields that goes to a nice uh, uh, value in the strong coupling limit, namely twice the logarithm of the golden ratio. Um, and you can calculate things like the entropy density. The point is that um, if you try to compare um, the entropy density for this interacting uh, vector model to the free entropy density, which is sort of uh, plotted over here, then you basically sort of get a curve that's shown in this picture. Um, it's slightly uh, unusual in the sense that the V coupling limit or the free limit is to the right of the plot. So this is um, no interaction. And to the left, um, owing to this compactification of the coupling value space, this is infinite coupling. And you find that the ratio S over S3 um, basically can be calculated. It's given by this black curve here for any value of the coupling. And you find that it goes from uh, one to something like 0 0.8 in the infinite coupling limit. It turns out that uh, you can investigate this 0 0.8 a little bit more closely. In particular, you can calculate um, the um, entropy density and using some polylog identities, you find that the strong coupling limit of the entropy density is given by, um, again, sort of a dimension full um, property that has a different number than in the free case. And you find that it's exactly four fifths of the free uh, entropy density in the strong coupling limit. Now, this result has been found um, several times in the literature. Uh, I think the earliest was by Subia Sashtev in 1993. Um, but the point being that uh, in this case, for the ON vector model, this uh, ratio is uh, directly calculated from the field theory, and it's equal to 4 -fifth. So, at least uh, to me, it seems surprising that um, this is not a property that is more well known um, to field theorists. Um, in particular, this is an exact result for large n. Um, and it, to me, it seems surprisingly similar to the ratio three quarters that we found for n equals four super emails, which as a reminder used uh, holography as a sort of input. This directly comes from a field theory calculation. Now you could say, okay, maybe this is a coincidence and maybe it's just, uh, thermodynamics that's easy to calculate. So what about other properties such as shear viscosity? Um, for shear viscosity, um, one basically has to sort of do more work. Um, it involves, if you want so, in the lingual field theories, it involves a resummation of ladder diagrams. But the point is that in the large end limit, this um, is tractable. That one can basically resum all the contributions that contribute to the shear viscosity in the leading large n limit. And one finds a surprisingly simple formula for the ratio E to over S uh, that in, is basically a ratio between two integrals. Um, these integrals have in the denominator an integral over the Bose-Einstein distribution functor N and some um, sort of momenta. And in the numerator, the only non-trivial piece is an integral kernel K, which basically includes all these resummation of these letter diagrams, such as the transport width uh, of the ON model. Um, the point is that, again, this property, E of S um, at large N, can be calculated numerically for all values of the coupling, including the infinite coupling limit. The result is shown here in this plot. Um, here uh, on the um, X or Y axis is the value of shear viscosity normalized by one of N. And on the x-axis, we again have the coupling constant uh, compactified such that at zero, there would be uh, no interaction. This would be the free theory, in which case the shear viscosity diverges. And in the infinite coupling limit, this curve goes to a constant. Um, the constant can be calculated. And I found numerically that the constant is about 0 0.42 uh, times the number of vectors n. And um, it scales with the number of vectors because in the ON model, the transport width 
is inversely proportional to the number of vectors, and that gives rise to this uh, number n in the shear viscosity ratio. It turns out that this um, behavior, the one over n result, um, not particularly this limit, but the one over n behavior of the shear viscosity um, was a behavior that was well known already since the uh, late 1990s and early 2000s for scale and vector um, theories, um, but it's qualitatively different for large and gate theories that the shear viscosity over entropy ratio does not scale with n, courtesy of the transport width not scaling inversely proportional with n. The result here again is universal, meaning that if um, you change the interaction from quartic interaction to sextic interaction or any other polynomial, um, you would get the same result in the strong coupling limit. So um, these are two particular uh, calculations that um, can be done in the N model, but it's not limited to that. You can basically sort of calculate pretty much anything you want to know about the field theory, including non-equilibrium transport properties. Um, here's another example. There are so-called thermodynamic susceptibilities. Um, these correspond to thermodynamic transport coefficients, if you want so. In the ON model, now in four dimensions, using the same techniques. And it turns out that one can calculate these transport coefficients in an interacting quantum field theory, um, basically semi-analytically um, in the ON vector model case. Um, another sort of application of this is that one can um, also calculate properties of actual QCD. There is an um, effective field theory called pineless EFT. Um, this pineless EFT is a non-relativistic quantum field theory, and it is amenable to solutions, analytic solutions sometimes with the same methods. And one can actually calculate properties such as the um, thermodynamic transport coefficient kappa for the unitary Fermi gas in that limit, and one finds it's exactly equal to the number density of the fermions divided by 12 times the mass. Okay, um, because of my unique schedule here, I basically would like to sort of wrap up with this. So basically, um, I try to sort of um, hint that um, there are some quantum field theories that can be solved with pedestrian methods in the large, large end limits. And this, this is interesting because it allows to calculate um, transport properties and real-time phenomena directly from the quantum field theory. Um, while the associate methods are fairly old, um, I think that there are now a lot of applications of these methods that are interesting. One could calculate bulk viscosities, conductivities, real-time transport, uh, quantum critical points directly from the quantum field theory in the strong coupling limit. Um, and Something that is surprising and that's coming out from this is that the strong coupling limit of these quantum field theories always give rise to universal behavior in the large end limit. These classes of theories that can be solved with this technique um, do not include gauge theories. Gauge theories are different. Um, they don't simplify in this large end limit. And um, there's no um, obvious analog to these ON model solution techniques. Um, for gauge theories. So to summarize, um, I talked about uh, theories of scalars and fermions that can be solved analytically at large n. Um, I very briefly sort of um, talked about some of the results that come out of this. Um, there are some classes of gauge theories that can be solved with this, namely, um, for instance, gauge theories in the large number of fermion labor limits, so large NF QED, for instance, would be an example of this. The surprising upshot of this is that one um, sort of finds results that are very much reminiscent of what one gets from holography, such as um, universal ratios of the strong to weak um, entropy density. So one gets four fifth analytically for the ON model, one gets E of S is 0.42 ish times N for the ON model for the shear viscosity of entropy ratio that are very much reminiscent of the results that one gets using. Um, holographic conjectures. For the ON model, there are no conjectures involved. It's just plain old math, um, which I think has the advantage of maybe elucidating some of the sort of uh, reasons behind these uh, ratios. So for instance, it's kind of curious to observe that one always gets these simple fractions for the 
strong to weak ratios here. I mean, it could have been some transcendental number, but one finds that these are simple fractions. Um, and um, that sort of has two conclusions in my opinion. Namely, the one is that holography is not the only tool to study strong coupling dynamics. And the other one is that now that you have a quantum field theory that you can solve in the strong coupling limit, this might actually help to explain um, or maybe prove uh, holographic conjectures. And there indeed are some recent works um, by Ovaha, Roni and um, collaborators that use this ON model to try to prove um, the conjecture dual of the ON model, which is higher spin gravity. So with this, I want to sort of end because of my own time constraints. Uh, I thank you for your uh, attention for this. And I don't want to keep you too long from your coffee break. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Paul, did you do also the calculation with fermions? Yes, we also did a calculation with fermions. Um, I apologize if that sort of didn't come out. So what uh, we did, for instance, was that there is a calculation of um, basically a, a non-relativistic neutron gas, um, which are fermions. Um, and basically, you can solve the unitary Fermi gas, which is a thing in nuclear physics. Um, okay. And it's the same sort of technique. Um, it's non-relativistic. That's the only difference. Um, but it's analytically solvable, and you get things like this transport coefficient in the unitary speak strong coupling limit of pure neutron matter. So is M the mass of the neutron or? Yes, that's the mass of okay. the neutron, yes. So it's dimensionful in this case, it's not? Kappa is always dimensionful. Um, kappa basically has dimension two, mass dimension two. Uh, number density has dimension three, so minus one is, is dimension two. Right now, but there's the other one that's dimensionless. So that right, doesn't... kappa is dimensionful. Yes, I apologize. Okay. There are others that are dimensionless, basically because you scale out the trivial dimensions, such as e to s. Um, some people scale um, kappa by things like um, the, den the sort of some power of the energy density or something like this. You could do that. Um, for this result, we didn't do it, but um, okay. it, 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 yeah, you can also calculate the energy density for the unitary Fermi gas if you wanted to. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah. I have a question on the here. You can also couple to the churn side, so like a churn side method theory. So depending on the this parameter, it, does it, that number change it or? The, yeah, the that, that's a very so? good. That's that's a very good remark. Um, I didn't sort of really sort of clearly say this. So the, another class of theories that is solved with similar things is uh, churn Simon theories. Um using this level rank duality. Um, I haven't really sort of provided any results in that context. I don't think that things like shear viscosity has been calculated for those. Um, for me, part of the reason is that I am still interested in actual real world QCD as a sort of theorist that I would like to solve and no properties of. And I just don't know how to easily connect um, these Jan Simon theories with QCD. Um, now you could argue that ON models is also not very much like QCD. So from that point of view, I completely agree with you. Um, but yes, so um, churn Simon theories, certain churn Simon theories can also be solved with this. And I and don't know the results for those. Yeah, then because of the this level and duality, the ratio would be flipped because uh, free theory for boson becomes a fermion. And uh, that means it definitely depends on the parameter, uh, this coupling par parameter. Yes. Um, so as I said, um, I, I still have a little trouble um, understanding physically what the coupling parameters for this um, Chern Simons theories actually means, um, much less so than for the ON model, for instance. Okay, thank you. Hi, Hi Paul. Maybe you have to run, but uh, this is Masanori speaking. So it's a dumb question. So based on the philosophy that the 4 by 5 and 3 by 4 are similar, I'm curious if you can improve the precision of 0 0.42 and oh, see if you one. can see it's one over pi times some rational number is it possible to improve this ratio yes it I, it okay so yes um basically um so basically you're arguing whether whether this number here can be improved and um first of all let me say that that i'm still kind of uneasy about this error here that's the best i could sort of do last year i i i'm not quite sure that that this error will hold um so I, it may be more like 10 uh, maybe more like 30 percent error here um 
in principle, the strong coupling limit of the shear viscosity just involves some integrals. So if somebody is gifted um, in analytic calculations of integrals, I see no objections for getting an analytic value for this e of s directly from the calculation that is fairly transparent. I was not able to solve these integrals analytically. Um, but yes, it's totally possible to sort of improve on the numerics um, if there's interest in this and, and check whether there is some um, simple interpretation in terms of four pi or three over four pi or other things like that. Okay, thank you. Okay, Paul, we're going to let you go. Thank yeah, you so thank much. You so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Sorry. Let's for thank the, Paul. Yeah, thank you.